beginning, when you do something new, they say you're at the peak in the Dunning-Kruger effect. You're at the peak of Mount Stupid, which means you have nothing but optimism. Everything's going to go all right. I, you know, I, I'll figure this out. So this guy did it. I could do it. And like your confidence is sky high, but your knowledge and skills is actually very low. And then what happens is after you've peaked out at Mount Stupid, you start going through all the hard stuff, right? You start doing the things you got to do that are difficult. And oftentimes, that's actually the best because you execute, because you're like, hey, this is the thing. It's going to work, and I'm going to execute. And you put all this energy into it. Sometimes when we get the wisdom, we start thinking we're smarter than we are, and we start screwing up the play because we start tinkering. Welcome to the Fitness Empire Podcast, where we show gym owners how to dominate their competition and build a massively profitable fitness business. Dustin and Matt collectively own 12 gyms and have a combined 30 years of experience in the fitness industry. They're here to help gym owners create an empire of impact and income. Empire Builders, how is it going? Hope you guys are having a great week, great day, and a great year. And we also want to set you up to succeed in the next year coming up. And so we're going to be touching a touchy subject. We're kind of going to go into this area that a lot of people have, I guess, polarizing opinions about, and that is all around challenges. Are they dead? Should we be using them? Uh, have they been done to death? Should they be something you stay away from to go your business? Me and Matt are going to weigh in. And so one of the reoccurring, I think, topics that you're going to hear in this is if you guys haven't heard about it, it is the Dunning-Kruger effect. And so it is basically a kind of like a roller coaster looking kind of graph. So essentially the X and Y axis is, you know, your confidence in what you're doing. And then the other one is your knowledge and skills. And so the beginning, when you do something new, they say you're at the peak in the Dunning-Kruger effect. You're at the peak of Mount Stupid, which means you have nothing but optimism. Everything's going to go all right. I, you know, I, I'll figure this out. So this guy did it. I could do it. And like your confidence is sky high, but your knowledge and skills is actually very low. And then what happens is after you've peaked out at Ma Mount Stupid, you start going through all the, the hard stuff, right? You start doing the things you got to do that are difficult and you start seeing all this resistance and you see all the problems and you start realizing, oh my God, this is not all sunshine's a rainbow. And before you know it, you're in a super low place called the Valley of Despair. And this is where you start thinking of throwing in the towel. Your confidence is now dropped. It's the opposite. It was sky high and now it's dropped. But what you've gained on the knowledge axis is you've gained some wisdom. You've gotten reps in, you're starting to see the difficulties that exist and then what is the you know final part is they call the slope of enlightenment and so now your confidence goes back up because you are gaining more confidence through more and more reps and you're figuring things out and you're talking to peers and you're hiring mentors and now you're starting to get this thing figured out and now your knowledge has also reached a new level of you know expertise and so now this might be 10 years in the game that's when they say that whole 10,000 hours or 10 years in the game starts to show up. So again, to recap, the Dunning-Kruger effect, Mount Stupid, followed by the Valley of Despair, goes into the slope of enlightenment. And it keeps going on into, you know, they call the plateau of sustainability. And so there's more and more to it. But it's an interesting thing. And the reason I'm bringing this up is we're going to be talking about similar topics, you know, around challenges and like novelty and trying to be new. And then, you know, what happens when all the difficulty shows up. And then we repeat that cycle over and over and we kind of become dopamine addicts. We're always looking for the next thing. What's the next play I can run in my my gym? I'm going to hop from this offer to that offer and that that guru to that guru. And I'm going to jack their model and I'm going to go with this model because I hear that one. And then like you don't even have an identity anymore. Like you're not even who you intended to be from the beginning. You're now a chameleon. You're copying what everyone's doing, whether it's pricing, model, offers. And we got to get you back to center. We got to realign. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Matt, I know you have a lot of thoughts around challenges being dead. I mean, I know I've ran them at my gyms for many years, now being 12 years in business, you've ran them as well. But why should somebody be looking at challenges critically in 2024? What should they be thinking about when it comes to challenges? Well, I think time-wise, right? We always like to do podcasts around timing of a relevancy for you in your business. Yeah. And a lot of people are thinking about 
New Year's challenge and I'm going to run a challenge inside of my business. And obviously most gyms are kind of thinking the same thing. But if you listen to the internet, spend enough time on social media, which I'm guilty, I spend too much time on social media, but I'm also look at, hey, what are the other gurus in the space saying and selling and, and, and saying? And a lot of the gurus are saying, you know, screaming from the rooftop, never do a challenge. Challenges are dead. You shouldn't be doing them. And, yeah. you know, context of what they're saying massively matters, but I'll, I'll get to the punchline. Shitty challenges and the same challenge you've been running for five years are absolutely dead, right? right. Um, because there is no novelty. There is nothing different about what you're doing. And, and truth be told is in order for your challenges to be like they used to be, because what they're referencing is like, hey, 2017, 2018, 2019, you could just run a basic challenge and you would get a flood of trials through your door and, and you can't do that anymore. And I would agree because if you're just running a basic challenge that looks the same as every other gym and, and challenges like that are 1000% played out. Um, and we talk to gym owners every day and a lot of gym owners are tired, they're burned out and they're doing a lot of half-ass marketing and half-ass challenges and not providing great experience and not getting great results. If that is the type of challenge you are running, absolutely it, it is dead. Um, but we'll go into to more details on that. But I want to address the the absolutes that we see in the the guru space of, of coaching because it drives me nuts is a lot of people are selling one way to do things. Uh, like there's just one way to do it. And if you just follow my one way to do it, you will be successful. And oftentimes these plays do work for a while because it is new it is new it is novel but when you only learn one way to grow your business and you're 1000 dependent on one play in one way what happens when it stops working because the truth is eventually everything stops working if you don't do what we're about to say uh teach you guys today and what we teach inside of our mastermind and one-on-one coaching clients Everything novel initially works, especially if you do what Dustin said, where you are, you know, on Mount Stupid and you just, you put all your energy and belief and faith that it works. And, and oftentimes that's actually the best because you execute because you're like, Hey, this is the thing it's going to work and I'm going to execute. And you put all this energy into it. Sometimes when we get the wisdom, we start thinking we're smarter than we are. And we start screwing up the play because we start tinkering versus blindly following the expert that told us to do like the script says this, I'm going to follow the script. The, they say they do this for marketing. I, I'm going to do that. So oftentimes a lot of stuff works better when you have the, uh, the Mount stupid in, uh, effect, right? Because, uh, when I was the VP at fit body franchise, there would be some people that would blindly follow the play and they'd have massive success. And if you were to talk to them, like, Hey, they're not the smartest person in the world. And you'd be like, Hey, what did you do? They're like, the thing that you told us to do, and then you go to somebody who, like, if you had a conversation with them, they're like super smart, super intelligent, and they don't have, they didn't get the results that the other person did. And then you start like, what did you do? Well, I, I changed this and I changed that. And I didn't like the thing that you had us do over here. So I changed that. What? And then the effects of it go down because they don't understand why or have the context of why we're asking them to do what they're doing. Or they think they're they're way too smart. One of my favorite examples of this, and I'm going in a rabbit hole, but I used to do a domination workshop for for Fitbody, and there was a new owner, and I was going over our grand opening campaign. So I'm I do I'm going through it, like you know we've opened locations with 450 challengers, and get through the process. And this guy, uh, he's like, man, my 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 marketing brain is going everywhere. I think I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to like, <laughs> I one at that point, I've been in it for like seven, eight years and have a proven process. And I just gave you the goal. I gave you the goal. And you're already talking about how you're going to go fuck it up because you're smart. Yeah. Um, and I, and I just laugh, but you know, with that, um, when you guys are listening to things, just realize like context matters. If somebody speaks in absolutes and there's only one way to grow your business, if there's only one way to do something, honestly, I would run or I just go, okay, I'm going to go learn their play, but I'm not going to be blind to the fact that 
this thing's not going to work forever and I'm going to learn the whole game of the running a gym business. I'm going to run all the different angles of being able to run marketing and learn how to do email copy and learn how to run ads and learn how to create programs that work. Because when you start learning that side of the game, which we teach our clients, like then you're not dependent on one plane, not dependent on one way of of doing things because 75% of my calls are people that were promised the world that this one thing was going to be the only thing that they ever have to do the rest of their life inside of their business. And I'm here to tell you that is false. And one of the reasons why gyms are struggling right now is because they've become lazy marketers and stopped doing the things that grew their business at the beginning. Yeah, like well, they, they run half-assed challenges. When they first ran challenges, they were all in. They're giving great client experience. They're getting clients awesome results. They got their team bought into to running the challenge. And now it's like, okay, guys, it's time to run another challenge. I know you guys are tired and you're burned down. You really don't want to do it, but let's do it because that's how we need to grow our business. How do you effective do you think that's going to be? It's not going to be super effective, right? So with that, I just want to start with me and Dustin aren't saying, hey, our way is is the best way. Truth be told, like we have methodology, but we pride ourselves in being coaches and being able to adapt our methodology to you, the, the individual, right? right? Because at the end of the day, if we give you a play that you're not capable of executing on, we've set you up for failure. Oftentimes, a lot of these plays are very team dependent. You need to have a very large team. So if I'm giving you a play and it requires you to have a large team and you're a one-man band or a one-woman band, I've just set you up for like failure, right? So being able to adapt models to you and your business and where you're at it is massively important. So if you are getting coaching, you are working with people, like really ensure that your coach and who you're working with has the ability to, one, they have a proven system, but they can adapt that proven system to you and your unique situation. Because if you can't, they're setting you up for failure. And it, it breaks my heart because I'm getting on these calls every single week with people um, that, that that's the case, right? All right, let's talk about our challenge is dead. The answer is yes or no. It's context dependent, right? But lame, boring challenges are dead. A lot of people running challenges today, it's it's the race to the bottom of how can I provide the least and get the most amount of people in and charge the most amount of money? Yeah. Like that. that's what it, a lot of times I talk to people like, yeah, I want to do a challenge, but I don't want to do all the work. But I want to get all the results and I want all the, the things that people who run challenges claim, right? If you're going to run a challenge, I would really urge you to go all in on running the challenge. Make it the best challenge possible. Give the people the best experience because challenges can compound. So if people come in on your challenge and they get an amazing experience and you pour into them and they get really good results, what do you, what do you think happens to word of mouth? What do you think happens to your next challenge? Um, at our peak, we had clients recruiting like crazy to their friends when we we're running challenges. Like, hey, you got to come in. Like, come in, do the challenge. You're going to get awesome results. It's going to change your life. Marketing becomes pretty easy when you do that. And, and that's what you have to get back to is I would really look at it through the lens like, hey, if I only had one challenge that is going to be the the marketing vehicle forever and I can only get referrals from people doing this challenge, what would the experience be? Right. Right? Like you would probably, you would probably put a ton of more energy and effort into that. And um, a lot of people really treat their challenges like as a higher priced LBO. Like they're getting the same type of experience, like not much more nutrition, not much more accountability, not much more coaching, not any extras, nothing, right? So stop running lame challenges, boring challenges. Uh, there's a lot of owners that that we work with that their challenges are their best way to generate trials through their doors. But when you hear them talk about the challenges, they actually get excited about it and they spend time and energy of, hey, what are we going to do with this challenge? How are we going to make it different? How are we going to like love up our clients? How are we going to make it fun? Like, and they're like energized and excited about it. And then the ones that are like, oh yeah, challenges are dead. 
and you hear them talk about it, you'd be like, one, you're not excited about it. Your team's not excited about it. How the heck are you going to get clients and non-members excited about coming in and doing your challenge when you're not even excited about it? So we all know that everything starts with you and leadership is influence. Where's your mindset right now? What is your state around challenges? What are your thoughts, beliefs, and feelings around running challenges? And we'll get it towards the end of the mindset that you have to have. But if you have a shitty state about challenges, you're going to have shitty challenges. And I know I'm cursing a lot, but it's just so clear and obvious to me when I talk to people, challenges aren't the problem. Your state around challenges is the problem. I've yet to find somebody that's like super excited about challenges and the impact that they're going to have and how they're going to make it more fun, not fill up their challenges. <laughs> but I've seen hundreds of owners like, yeah, challenges don't work anymore. I know the problem. It's not the, cha well, it is the challenge because you're running crappy challenges, but it's the energy and the state that you have around the challenges. Before we're we go on to- we're, we're seeing this branch off into other like uh, trial. Like you guys can even swap out the word challenge for trial. I've seen people treat people as less than because it was free, because it was a dollar a day program. And they basically even referred to them as tire kickers and, you know, like, you know, just not a good fit and, you know, low, bad quality people. Who's a bad quality human? If they have a heartbeat, they are a good lead, in my opinion. Like, the, you know, again, do they have the ability to pay for your program? No, but like, can we sit down and do some creative financing? Can they pay in full? Uh, a lot of people get stuck up on that they can't afford the monthly, but some people just don't want to add more subscriptions and monthly bills. They, they can easily afford to pay them full. Can they put it on credit card, you know, with the paid in full and now pay the pay credit card back $40 a month instead of whatever your monthly is? Like, get creative and don't judge people based on what you, you know, you see. Um, so again, you're right. It is the owner's mindset. And I always like to reference that the the business is a mirror. It is literally reflecting back to who the owner is. And so if you're not happy with what you see in the business, then there's something usually you got to fix in yourself and then the business will reflect that. So that that's a good way to remember it. Like your business is a mirror. Yeah. So I wouldn't even like think about running a challenge if you're not in the, the right mental state to, to do it. Right. But you also got to get back to like, why do we do this? We're not running a challenge so we can just get more people through the doors. Like if that's the only incentive, then we're not going to market hard. We're not going to give them the, the experience. Like I truly believe that challenges for us in our business, the, the reason why we've been so successful in our locations is because that's the mechanism that we use to get people results. That's the mechanism that we use to to change people's lives. And the power of challenges, I, I'll show you the power of challenges. So in 2000, what was it? Last, not this year, but the, the previous year, uh, we went back to our challenge system using our direct macros. And we had 29 clients lose 50 pounds or more. Wow. The, this this past year we changed our model and we went to more of a um like unlimited you can meet with us whenever you want um like actually a higher level of service and, and accountability and support and we stopped doing some of the challenges we've had one client lose 50 pounds this year one what was the difference it was the challenges um that's the power of a the challenges. They change people's lives. Are they harder? Are they more work? Are they like they can suck the life out of you sometimes? Absolutely. But that is the mechanism that we get to change and impact people's lives and completely have the potential to change their identity. And Millet says there's two ways to change someone's identity. Do hard things in a short period of time and change your associations. What do challenges do? Make people do hard things in a short period of time and change people's associations, right? Now they're hanging out with healthy people. They're getting the influence of you. They're getting the influence of, of your coaches. So we have the power to, to do that. I'm just going to go back and straight into mindset. I was going to end with mindset, but we're kind of going down that <laughs> path. So I'm just going to start there and then we'll get into to more of the, the tactical things, right? So one of the things that has to change too, because you talk to owners and the, the sustainable nutrition space 
I think has massively hurt clients results and massively hurt gyms. Man. The like, Hey, if you can't do it for the rest of your life, don't do it for a day type of type of mentality. Right? So what ends up happening is we end up not getting clients any results in, in, in the period of time during these challenges. We try to make it uber sustainable for them. Like, but at the end of the day, challenges do need to be more aggressive. Challenges do need to get clients quicker results and quicker wins and get the motivation because research shows that if you don't get results in the first 30 days, you're 60% likely to quit whatever you're doing. So if you're not getting clients results quickly and they don't perceive that they're going to get results quickly on your program, you're going to lose them. So how good is your sustainability when you just fucking lose people in the first two weeks of your program? You're actually hurting them oftentimes by trying to making it so sustainable. And in, in reality, sustainability is different for every single person. So if you think you have a one size fits all sustainability challenge for people, you're dead freaking wrong. You need to have different tools and different resources to help people. So I want to address that first. Like you do have to have a challenge that gets people results. Yes. Plain and simple, right? Like if you have a one size fits all meal plan and you're feeding the same somebody who's 250 pounds, the same as a 130 pound person. That's not right. Like, so we have the ability to customize challenges for people and ensure that every single person gets, gets results at scale. But the next thing that like kind of burns people out on challenges. And sometimes we think we're hurting people is just the fact of percentage what? of people like getting results or percentage of people that get results on the challenge. And then they fall off after the challenge thinking it's the challenge's fault. We're dealing with the human condition. Over a long enough period of time, people fail at everything. Seriously, like go look at the stats on running a business. Go look at the stats on marriage. Go look at the stats at being successful at weight loss. The stats are completely against us. So we have to reshape our mindset of what's a win for our clients. And really it's going to break down to if we can get 20, 25% of people that like this is the thing that like really gets them the motivation and gives them the spark and that kicks off their 50 to 100 pound weight loss journey. If we can be in the 20 percentile, 25 percentile that people use the challenge as a springboard to to more or they do a challenge, they maintain their weight, they do another challenge, lose more weight and then they maintain their weight. Like that's a freaking win. Oftentimes the, the, when we get frustrated is because there's such a gap between expectations and reality. We think that in order to have a program that we consider successful, we got to have a hundred percent of people that they come in, they do the program and then they stay with it for the rest of their life. That ain't happening folks. And if you do like talk to like, come to me and Dustin and like, we'll figure out like how to put that in play. Cause that's a billion trillion dollar, uh, thing that you got going on. And uh, like a lot of the gurus too are in the nutrition space. If, if you just get the certification, you can help every client. Yep, bullshit, right? Like, no, you're not. That is just not going to be possible. Like, it sounds like you can, but you can't, right? You're not going to help everybody. So 20, 25% is good. 50% will, like, when I say 20, 25% too, like, these are the freaking hyper responders. They're all in. They're doing everything that they need well, to well. do. Like, they're praising you and saying how great of a coach you are. Like, those are the ideal people. We want 100% of those, but we're going to get 20, 25%. You're going to get another 25% that are like, they do pretty well. They're pretty consistent. But if you were to ask them, like, hey, I could have done way more. I could have, you know, and then you're going to get anywhere from 25 to 50% that are just, eh, like, they don't really work out like they're supposed to. They don't follow their nutrition plan. They might not turn in their weekly progress report. You might be hunting them down. They might be blaming you because the program doesn't work. My question to you is which ones are you focusing on? Because depending on which ones you're focusing on, you will you will either be excited about running challenges or you'll be burned out about running challenges. And depending on who you're focusing on, you'll either feel like you're doing good or you feel like you're doing harm to people. And if you're in the watching the sustainability nutrition coaches these days, they will tell you, you are hurting people by putting them on a, uh, you know, putting them in a deficit or having them reduce a macronutrient for a little while. Like you're doing harm and you're creating uh, mental health issues and you're doing bullshit. 
they already it's had, right? Like our goal is to try to support them and help them any way we can. And, and oftentimes we do have to have some accelerated uh, results. And I know I'm going to get hate on this, but just even like sometimes like, hey, have them follow traditional macro using an app. You know how many people love doing that? Not many, right? So if that's your only mechanism and that's the only thing that we do with people, you're going to lose a, a lot of people. So you also have to have the ability to meet clients uh, where they're at, which is all stuff that we teach our people in the mastermind. So if you want to join us, uh, you're more than welcome to. Well, All I'm right. glad you're bringing this up, Matt, because this also shows up when your team is feeling pressure from the clients. Like they might hear three noisy clients say, I really wish you had this other session time. You know, if you had a noon, yeah. it would be packed and they, and then they come to you and then they say things that are, are the very absolute statements. Like all the clients are asking for this or all the clients are canceling or all the clients, um, struggled on the last challenge. And so with well, the point you're bringing is like, before you guys go into your next one, first rally up the troops and get them fired up and look at that 25 to 30% that got results and said, this is why we're doing another challenge because look at what the good we did because your team will remember, like you said, the 30% who didn't get any results and they were complainers and they dragged everyone down. So you control the narrative and you know, it's funny. I say the same thing. I just broke it in third. The 30 are going to get amazing results. 30% will get kind of decent results and then the final third will get like no results and you know it is always going to link to the effort they put into it those people that didn't they fell prey to their excuses you know like i didn't make yeah. it in i didn't follow the diet yeah, mindset issue mindset issue and so um your job as the leader is to get everyone looking at the good because our brain is very good at finding the bad and so you have to be the person that shows them Look at all these results we got, team. This is why we're doing another challenge to get more people in this, right? And and I I truly actually think that like in in the world of um like even running a gym business, right? Like longevity, oftentimes where our mental states are at are directly related to what are we focusing on? Yeah. Because same thing, like in those ratios, I always call it the five percent too. Like there's always going to be five percent clients that are just absolutely miserable and, and suck. And those are the ones that we'll focus on. And if you focus on those clients, you will want to quit your business. Like plain, plain and simple. It's the same thing with anything we do, right? The percentages don't change. Like there's going to be great clients. There's going to be okay clients. And there's going to be not so great clients. What are you focusing on? All right. Next thing, we're going to get in some um, really tactical things now that we've hopefully fixed your mindset uh, around the challenges. Um so the next thing with your challenge is like, there has to be a level of novelty and change and having uh, solving unique problems and having a unique vehicle. So there's three reasons why people don't buy things. So there's the vehicle reason, right? So like, what's Man. the unique mechanism that's gonna help solve my problem? So if the, the vehicle never changes and it's always the same thing and I've seen, seen it before or I've tried it before, then we're going to really trigger the internal belief reasons of why people don't purchase. Like they're going, will this work for me? So if I've tried it before or I've tried something very similar before and I failed, why is it going to work this time? Right? And that's the question that they're asking themselves. Can I do this? Is this going to work for me? And if it's like the same thing that they've done before, it's the same meal plan as before. It's the same, you know, uh, macro counting app. It's the same, Da, 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 da. I tried that before. It didn't work. They're not going to do your challenge. Hey, gym owners, are you looking to take your business to the next level? Well, I wanted to let you know we have open enrollment now for the Fitness Empire Mastermind, where we give you everything you need to grow your business. We have done for you marketing campaigns. We even have team trainings where we train your team members for you. And we have a ton of done for you assets and resources and it's all inside the Fitness Empire Mastermind. We have weekly coaching calls as well, so you can talk to me or Matt directly, and it's a lot different than this podcast where it's just a one-way conversation. We're just talking at you. Well, in the Mastermind, we can actually exchange dialogue and we can help you grow your business. And the best part is you get a one-on-one -on -one call with him or myself every single month so we can help you to outline your attack plan to grow your business. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go to fitnessempiremastermind.com to apply. Not all gym owners are gonna be a good fit. I just wanna call that out now. 
because we need you to be at a certain level to be able to take action on what we teach. And also we gotta make sure you're good for the culture within our mastermind. We're very protective that only positive and coachable owners join the program. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go to fitnessempiremastermind.com to apply. Right, so like being able to come up with unique angles and different, you know, nutritional mechanisms. Oftentimes it's the nutritional mechanism that has to change. Like even being able to change from a macro challenge to a meal plan, right? Or some type of different nutritional philosophy for this upcoming challenge will be make a difference because like think about your clients. If you're trying to get your clients to do the challenge and they're like, oh, it's the same thing as last time, eh, I'm good. But if it's a new nutrition um completely different than than last time and you're doing fun unique things in the challenge that you didn't do last time then i then i'm on board like there's there's clients that do like little black dress and they they sign up for that because there's a there's a party right so like they're like i only did it because there's a party i'm like all right cool you did it because there's there's a party so making your stuff different i think is really 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 important right um the naming convention, if you, it's the same, like new year, new you challenge, like was popular for, for a long time. I guarantee you, we're still going to see and be inundated with new year, new you challenge. And it's the same thing every, every single year, like start using your marketing brain, and come up with, with different things. So one of the challenges that we're creating for everybody in the mastermind is it's a sw- six week ultimate reset challenge, right? People want to reset their goals. We're going to help them reset their metabolisms and, and help them achieve their goals in 2024. So it's, it's very different than what everyone else is going to be on the marketplace. But we also have a unique mechanism. So we're going to change the vehicle. And, and really looking at the stats, 64.8% of the population between 40 and 59, which is really the, the ideal buyer because they have buying power right, for our services, is insulin resistance. And when you're insulin resistant, it makes it much harder to, to lose weight, especially when following traditional diets. So our program is going to take a three-phase approach to help them combat their insulin resistance and get them losing weight like they're in their 20s again, right? So really targeting that demographic, and then we're using our proprietary direct macronutrition system. So the whole system is designed to get them optimally burning body fat by helping them overcome their, their insulin resistance. So- never marketed that before never they probably never seen that before they don't realize that that's their problem that's why i haven't been able to lose weight i must be insulin resistant if you all go steal that at least give me some credit please um now (laughs) with that oftentimes too with your marketing when you try to market to everybody you're marketing to nobody so one thing to be thinking about is one avatar one problem one solution So in my location, we're going to be marketing to women 40 plus that have 20 pounds or more to lose. So all the marketing messaging, all the ads, all the uh, sales pages, all the email copy is going to be targeted to women 40 plus that have 20 pounds to lose. Because most likely, if you are 40 plus, you haven't been working out and you have certain symptoms, then you are insulin resistant. And if you try to follow traditional diets, you're not going to be successful. So you can see it, it starts to not just become a weight loss challenge, right? It's becoming very specific. I know my avatar. I know what I'm going after. I know their problem. So they have a direct problem that's preventing them from losing weight. And I have the solution for that, right? So the marketing becomes a lot easier. And you might be like, well, then you're not marketing to as many people. But I'm marketing. I know who I'm fishing for, right? I know what I'm going after. So if you know what you're going after, you know what bait to use. So if you're fishing for every fish, so let's just pretend you're on on Lake Michigan and you're fishing for every fish and you're just using a general bait, how many fish are you going to catch versus like, hey, I'm going salmon fishing and I know I need this bait and I know where they're at. How much more successful are you going to be? <laughs> right? There, there's no bass fishers that are like, hey, I'm going after all these other things. No, bass fishers are going after bass and they know what lures to do and they know where they're hanging out. So they're going to be much more successful. So the difference between an amateur and a professional 
is they know exactly who they're going after. They know exactly what bait that that they need to use, and, and it makes a massive difference, right? So that's the you know novelty and standing out is being able to come up with new offers. So in the mastermind, me and Dustin are, are going to be coming out with brand new offers that the marketplace hasn't seen before, but also knowing what works with 10, 20 years of experience, right? But creating a new, unique, novel approach to going after uh, our clientele because, you know, at the end of the day, me and Dustin have been at this for a long, long time. Our people have seen our ads and they've seen everything that we have to offer. Yes. And uh, if you want to get anywhere back to what it felt like in 2018 and 2019, then we need to get actually getting like new offers out in front of people. Um, but to Dustin's point, it's not just like random stuff, right? It's going into it with a like really assassin mindset of who are you after? What are we targeting and how are we going to market to them? All right. Next part is results. If you do challenges over and over and over again and you don't get results, then your challenges will die, right? Because really like if you have a good challenge, the results of that challenge should help market the next one. So what we do with our challenge with the prize winners, we don't announce the winners until like the next challenge is coming up because then we get to share the winners of previous challenges to be able to market the next challenge coming up because it insinuates like, hey, you do the challenge, you're gonna get results like these people. <laughs> but if I can see over and over and over and over again that people that do this challenge get results, then people are going to sign up. But if you're if you're only telling and not showing, eventually you're going to be screwed because you can only tell people so many times that, hey, do my challenge and I'm going to get you amazing results. But then you don't show anybody getting amazing results. Pretty soon you become a false prophet, right? And you lose trust in your marketplace. So whenever you make a claim, you need to back it up and show people that that actually happens to people that when they sign up for that program. And everything ties back to the value equation from Alex Ramosi. If we can knock it, like lock in on the desired outcome and increase the likelihood of achievement, which is by showing everyone that people that sign up actually get this result, we increase the value. And then if we can decrease time delay and pain, sacrifice, and effort, make it seem like it's very easy to get results with the program, that increases the value of the program. And the easiest way to do it is show people just like them. They did the program. They got this result. You can do it too. Over and over and over again. Like where are you putting your before and afters? Are you emailing them out? Are you putting them on on social media? Like when we go to run challenges, we start dumping before and afters on our social media because what ends up happening is if I see an ad I'm going to go to your webpage and I'm also going to look at your social media. So if I see an ad for a six week challenge and then I go to your social media and I'm like, and I see 10, 20, 30 before and afters of people with their story who just did your six week challenge and they got life changing results. Do you think that may influence them to actually hit the buy button? Absolutely. Right. So, but that only happens if you're getting people results and you're able to showcase those results. So you need to get people results. Like if your challenges, because they're so sustainable, aren't getting results, you're really screwing yourself to be able to market moving forward. Because you can sell sustainability, but like nobody wants to lose five pounds in six weeks. Like no one's signing, like the value of losing five pounds in six weeks is zero. That's just the truth, right? So you might feel better about it and you might go mock other gyms that get people quicker results. But um, at the end of the day, like if you don't have a product that delivers results, you probably will go out of business and you won't be able to market anything. Um, I know I'm going to get hate for that, uh, but that's just the, that's just the truth. Anything you want to add to that, Dustin? I, I think that we got to put ourselves back into the customer's shoes. Like if you've ever lost, went through a weight loss transformation, you know, that's what triggered you to go to the gym was like, I need to drop these pounds. It was like the scale scared you, the new notch in the belt, the new size you're going to have to wear. 
it, it was always tied to weight. And if you've never been through one, it's kind of hard to kind of, you know, sympathize with that because you didn't go through it yourself. But as somebody who went through 60 pounds of, you know, weight loss and talking to many other clients, that is always the trigger for a trend, a physical transformation. So obviously we always say there's nuance. If you work in a performance, you know, kind of program and you work with a college athlete, like you're, that's not going to trigger people to walk in, but most of our audience, they do transformations. And so you want to speak to them in their language, which is to get a weight loss result. And, you know, again, I know it might, we're talking about offending you guys. Well, we know you get worried about offending the people who are non weight loss people in your area. They're not your ideal customer, you know, take them as they come in, but like, don't be upset that you're pushing them away. It's better to get more clear. And like Matt said with the bait, bring the right people in because the hardest thing I find, I don't know if you agree with this, Matt is keeping people that are non weight loss clients because they don't have a goal they're chasing. Like they, they, they don't see it as, as, you know, kind of like a, in a numerical way or in a measurable way They're they are more lifestyle. We want people to be in lifestyle, but they're the ones oftentimes to write you off the quickest because they are not seeing a measurable, like almost like ROI, you know, like that's that they're like, I'm paying you how many pounds it get me to drop off. If I've been there six months and I haven't lost a pound, I start to perceive you as a valuable you know, service and, and then fee. And that's why I start having thoughts of leaving. So again, double down on that's your customer and just get better and better getting them results. Cause I'm telling you guys, there's plenty to go around. We are inching closer to 50% obesity. You don't have to think that you're ever going to run out of the customers to keep your busy, uh, that have this type of goal. So that's all I would ask. 54.8% of the population between 40 and 59 is insulin resistant and then only goes up. It's not because they're healthy. It's not because they're fit. It's not because they work out. It's not because they eat right. Like there's yeah. a lot of people that need need our help and our services. So there's a lot of gyms that struggle because they want to be like this lifestyle gym and they're altruistic with their beliefs and th their philosophies and, and all that stuff. But oftentimes those are the ones that, that go out of business because they're not addressing the marketplace and what they want. Um, yeah. So like you can have your your views or you can actually help people and, and also make money by helping people solve their problem because the the cycle if you look at the journey of a client that we want clients to become lifestyle right like they work out because that's who they are because they don't miss workouts they eat healthy because that's part of their identity they get enough sleep they drink through water they do all the, that stuff like yeah you want to to get them there but the person that we're marketing to is in massive amount of pain and they think they get out of pain by getting a result. So if you're not selling them a result that's linked to them getting out of pain, good luck selling them anything. Hey, come in and work out with us. Like people that do 14 free days, like oftentimes that, that offer stops working. And, and a big reason why is you're selling them workouts. They don't link workouts with me getting out of pain. Like if you're not providing a result, then like really like actually your consumer, I just want you to think of a 45 year old woman that is 40 pounds overweight that hasn't been to the gym in uh, a decade, scared to freaking death of the gym. And you're like, hey, come work out for free. There's a reason she's not there, right? So if your offer isn't linked to, hey, lose those 40 pounds and start really feeling good again, like, and 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 I, all your struggles that you currently have in your life will go away. You're not reaching that person. So your altruistic views of what workouts and stuff should. I even have, you know, team members that, you know, sell what we do, and the, and they think that the workouts are so fucking valuable. And I'm like, they're not valuable to the consumer unless you tie it to them getting out of pain and them losing weight. So if we're not talking to them about the weight loss and how our program is going to help you lose that weight and, and change your life, you talking about the workouts provides zero value to that person. If you actually look at the value equation, unless you're tying the workouts to increasing the likelihood of achievement and decreasing time delay and decreasing pain, sacrifice, and effort, you're actually devaluing our services by talking about your workouts. And that's just the truth. All right, let's talk about experience. Because the experience matters. How much time, energy, and effort are you working on the experience? And then also part of the experience is 
just because you run a challenge doesn't mean people are going to stay. So if your challenges aren't set up to sell a membership at the end, then what are we doing? And I always, I always joke and tell people because it's always funny how many people run trials without knowing what the end goal is. The end goal is that they become a member. The goal isn't to run a challenge. The goal isn't to do that. The goal is that they become a member, right? So like the whole experience needs to align with them becoming a member or else what are we doing? We just spent a bunch of marketing, a bunch of time, a bunch of money and a bunch of energy for what? So we need to set up the outcome to actually elicit sales. So before you even think about the experience, go, hey, what's the goal? Okay, the goal is they get a great experience and they stay. All right, we need to reverse engineer that. Like that's the goal. So with that, with your challenges though, how great of an experience are we providing? Are we providing legitimate coaching, not BS coaching and uh, kind of half-assing it, like legitimate coaching. Like people aren't turning in their progress reports. We're running them down in the parking lot. If clients are off track, we're pulling them in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting after their session. We're doing a Zoom call with them. Like we're doing whatever we can do to make sure that we did everything in our part to make sure that they get good results. Is that the coaching experience, right? So how much accountability, When we like real accountability, not, oh, we have you turn in a report and that's it. That's not accountability. Accountability is getting people to do what they're supposed to do when they don't want that, when they don't want to do it. That's real accountability, right? They're getting the support that they actually need. Uh, we're creating fun special events inside of the challenges that are unique and different that only only they get because they're they're in the challenge, right? Think about it as a member. Why should I do your challenge? Like, yeah, I want to lose weight. I know I need to get back on track. I've been eating bad. Cool, right? Like, I need the extra coaching, the accountability, and support. But can you also do some events and some things that they get that no one else gets, right? Like, being in the challenge is like a VIP experience that no. um you know but something to look forward to and those those mechanisms have to change every single challenge because the novelty is one and done one and done people get like ah oh, yeah it's the same thing again okay like so the first time they did it they're super excited and they love it so you're like let's just do it again because everybody loved it they yeah. loved it because it was the first time they did it but they don't love it as much the second the third the fourth the fifth time so it's got to be it's got to be unique and different every single time, and uh, you know you really want to make people feel like they're kind of missing out if they're not a part of it, That's right? So like, how much energy and effort are you putting into the the client experience, and then are we backing that into people actually staying and and becoming members? It's Anything like you want to add, Dustin? I was say it's like a crappy uh, like movie reboot. Like we don't want to see Fast and Furious Eleven, you know? So like. If you're on your 11th challenge and it's like, it's the same, you know, characters and the same storyline and the same, you know, ending, I don't want to watch it. And so like, that's kind of what, you know, your, your challenge can be like. And so those are always flops and Hollywood tries to be lazy and they're like, we don't feel like coming up with a whole new story. So we're just going to, you know, do a reboot of a proven, you know, model. And it's like, a lot of times they don't do well. So to your point, ask yourself get creative and sit down with your team. Like you don't have to have all the answers. Like your team is smart and they got a lot of cool ideas. And also guess what? I know we've said this in past episodes, your team will be most excited for the things they think of versus the things the boss tells them what to do. And this actually happened in our business recently. I had something I was actually thinking about and it was such a relief when the coach came to me and said, Hey, I think I was thinking of doing this. And I was like, Oh my God, like, and now I just had this, uh, you know, extra excitement because I knew they would see it to the finish line. They would have the ultimate conviction in it. They would go sell it to their clients with even more firepower than if the boss said, hey, you need to go get this done and I want you to do it tomorrow. And so let them kind of like share. And then when you see something like that or you hear something from them that you love, give them lots of encouragement, enthusiasm. Oh my God, it's a great idea. Can I ask you to like own it? Because that's the other thing I say is like, hey, if you got a problem, then you have to own solving it. And that way it teaches you don't just bring up a problem and you complain about it, right? So it's like, hey, on the last challenge, the problem I had with it was this. Awesome, you're now in charge of fixing that, right? Because you brought up that problem. And it's not that I'm trying to get people to zip their lips and not bring up problems. I'm trying to get them to be solution-minded, you know? So yep. yeah, use your and team. And a great, a great question with the team too is like, hey, this challenge, like 
I want to like knock it out of the park. I want to give clients the, the greatest, you know, experience and get really awesome results. Um, how can we do that? Yeah. How can we do that is a solution based question kind of versus what do you guys think? What do you guys think leads like, I don't know about you, Dustin, but I've never ever gotten really positive answers from what do you guys think? Sure. It goes down like rabbit holes of why we can't do something or, or like the, the least amount of effort possible, right? So plant the seed of like wanting to do this to be epic and be awesome and like we want to roll out the red carpet and make this the best challenge we've ever done. How can we do it? You're They're now going to like be given good ideas and, and positive solutions versus shitting on like why we shouldn't do a challenge or why we should dumb it down and why we should make it the the least ask me how i know uh so uh that that's a golden tip for for everybody there when you guys are leading a team and you want to get them on board is ask how can we versus what do you guys think no. like, right. they will poop on your idea real quick all right last thing marketing and sales and um actually it's not the last thing i just lied i got a few more things for you guys um when you think about running your challenge and launching your challenges from a marketing perspective like I said, we've become real lazy marketers. If you really look at the biggest challenges that you ever did, you probably follow what what we talk about with tease, whisper, shout, right? Like you kind of started like teasing a big thing's coming and this is going to be awesome. It's going to help you guys get amazing results, right? And you're, you're kind of teasing it as you go. And where traditional marketing has come today, it's just like uh, challenge size, sales are live today. Go sign up. And we just think everyone's going to be rushing. Who buys the first time you launch something? Like not many people, right? Like, but if you tease it and you show them, hey, this is why you should do the program. And then, hey, sales are live. You'd be amazed at how much more receptive and how much easier sales are, are going to be. We do a whole marketing webinar on this topic. Um, so if you want a replay of understanding our, our marketing methodology of how to do uh, what we call these mega launches, um, just reach out to Dustin with with replay and we'll get that to you. Um, marketing your results. Again, if you if you have results from your challenges, selling the next one becomes a lot easier, right? Like in sharing client stores, like sending out emails of clients that did your challenge and talking about their experience and the results that they got are a thousand times better than just buy my challenge, right? I promise you'll get results versus like, showing them that you're going to get the, these results and and really that the client saying, hey, these guys are awesome. This program was awesome. Um, I love the results that I got. That's going to be much more powerful inside of, of your marketing. And then if you do it right, like we do a launch method. So part of that is building up an email list and getting people excited about the challenge that's coming. When you do that, it's not just about the challenge sales. It's now you have the ability to follow up with leads. So if you did a... Uh, free challenge or you did a, a giveaway of some sort, um, whatever your highest leverage item is, you could literally call every single lead and say, hey, congratulations, you won. And now you get more leads coming through in through your doors. Now, when you run a refill program afterwards, that's going to be a lower price program than what your challenge was. All those leads that didn't take advantage of your challenge, now a, a large majority of them will take advantage of, of your next offer. They just weren't ready yet or they'll buy in the future. And then the more people you have in your challenges and excited about your challenges, you can create referral events for the people inside of those challenges. So just building up the email list and using the launch method that me and Dustin teach, there's three other ways to literally like carve every piece of meat off the bone of the strategy. So if you just think it's about the six week challenge, you're missing the boat. There's other ways to get a ton of trials and a ton of people through your doors um, after the, the six-week challenge, but we leverage it and use our launch method to, to be able to do that. And the next part that it always blows my mind how many people don't realize this, but if you have awesome challenges and you're getting 25, 30% of your clients to do the challenge, it is the ultimate retention strategy of your clients on planet earth. How many clients well, sign yeah. up for a challenge and they're like, hey, I'm putting in my uh, my two-month notice? None. 
right? Like literally, however long your challenge is, you know you're retaining people during during that time. Um, clients that do challenges and are engaged in the programs that you offer, they don't cancel. Yes. So during the holidays, we do a longer challenge. Uh, I actually like to do a 12 week. Most people that run in my circle, like, how do you do a 12 week? I can't do that. But I'm like 12 weeks starting in September, all the way to December 10th. One, I got clients paying me 20 plus dollars a week for 12 weeks now. And then, uh, clients, non-clients are paying almost their EFT. If you're doing large group for 12 weeks. So it's almost like selling them a three month membership. But then I have them engaged at the time in the year that's the highest cancellation rates. So you want to reduce attrition during the holidays, have them do a challenge during the holidays. They will then not cancel, right? Because they're getting results. They're actively engaged. Your coaches are pouring into them. So it's one of the best ways to reduce attrition. Also, clients doing challenges. If you're smart about it, you can leverage your clients doing the challenges to promote your challenge coming up. So now you have more potential referrals from your current clients into the challenge. You got to incentivize them, but now you have more chances of getting more trials into the challenge. So again, if you run in a crappy challenge, you're not excited about it, you're not getting clients in and they're like, man, people aren't coming in. I'm like, well, you're, you're killing your biggest referral base, which is your clients to get people in through the doors. So re-engage your clients, get them excited about the challenge, and you're going to see more referrals and more people coming into your challenge um, organically. So those are some of the, the most important things of the client side of things. I lo- like I look at client side of the challenge. Like for me, that that's also a sign of like, hey, how well are things going in that location? If you're running a challenge no. and you've got 10% participation, you should be really fucking worried. Yeah. No. But if you're running a challenge and you're getting 25, 30, 40% participation, you know things are humming really well in, inside of that location because coaches are recruiting, clients are excited about it. They believe what you're offering is going to help them, right? So that instantly, like our locations that have the highest attrition rates also have the highest, I mean, the lowest um, people actually doing our challenges uh. because our team isn't engaging them and getting them excited. So- that's a veteran tip for you guys. Um, and then pricing wise, there's so many people that want to do like high ticket challenges. Like, hey, my challenge is $50 a week. And they try to sell that via sales page. And then they're like, and I want 100 challengers. You you can't eat your cake and have it too. Like if you want higher volume, the price has to be lower, right? So for us, the sweet spot's always like 20 to $29 a week. And then registration is usually the same as the weekly payment or no more than 50 bucks. If you're trying to sell a six week challenge full price at say, I don't know what that would be. I can't do math, like $199. And they got to buy, they see a, a cold ad, they got to buy and they got to whip out their credit card for $199. You're going to struggle. But if they can just whip out their credit card to put down a $20 deposit and then their weekly payments don't start until the challenge starts, that's a much easier sell, right? Because if you're trying to sell high ticket, like you're going to need to do a lead form to a a phone call and and have really great follow-up. But if you're trying to sell via a sales page, then the price needs to be reasonable. Like you, like unless you have a massive email list and have massive trust and you just have massive transformation, like before and afters, Anything over $30 on a sales page is going to be really, really, really hard for a challenge. I wish I could lie to you and be like, it doesn't matter. You can sell a $50 a week challenge via a sales page. Um, I have found anything past 29 is going to be really, 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 really difficult. Yeah. Um, so you can do high volume plus high ticket. So again, kind of ninja tactics, like whatever you have high leverage with, in your um, inside of your your boot camp, if you have boot camp and you have like semi private and one on one, you can sell the higher ticket item via a sales page. Start them on a challenge with a one on one consultation, and then you can upgrade them to higher levels of training and service, and make it more like a high ticket item 
uh, with that. So if you want the volume and the ease of getting people in, but you still want to try to get some high ticket sales, then you can be able to do that. Also, going back to clients, challenge is also a great time to upgrade the level of service. And I know, Dustin, you've talked about it on previous podcasts is, hey, during the challenge, if you want to upgrade your your membership during this time, so if they're doing large group training or boot camp, and you're like, hey, during the challenge, we're allowing five people to, to upgrade their membership to semi-private, and you're just going to pay an extra X per week, that's another great way to start ascending members inside of your program, program by leveraging the, the challenges during that time. Because what's great about challenges is people go all in and they want to maximize their results. So we can leverage that multiple ways, upgrading the level of service that that they're getting during that time, and then also selling them other stuff that is going to help them, like supplements, like creating supplement packages that tie in with the program. So clients become more active buyers during challenge times. So if there's things that you can be selling them that they perceive is going to help get them better results during that time, that is the time to do it because everybody wants to maximize their program. They could buy that stuff at any time, but the minute they go on a program, just think about you guys. Like if you're going to start a new, maybe you saw a thing and you're like, man, I'm going to really take my shit to the next level. And I saw a 12 week program that I'm going, going to do. Like you go and buy some new supplements, you buy maybe some new workout clothes, um, all things that you think are going to help you be more consistent with that program, you guys will buy them, you know, at that time. You become hyper buyers during challenge time. So you can be leveraging those things um, as you go. So those are all the things of like why challenges are good. How do we make them better? How do we improve them? Hopefully that helps shift your guys' mindset a little bit that challenges aren't dead. Crappy challenges are dead. <laughs> um, but if if you don't have the time, the energy that you can put into the challenges and you want like done for you, like reach out to me or Dustin, we can show you how you can get involved with the uh, six week ultimate reset that we're creating for our mastermind members. Um, and if you need somebody pouring into your team and your mindset, we also train your team on how to run the challenge and get them bought in and get them excited um, and be able to influence their mindset so you don't have to do that. Um, and many times uh, a lot of people in the past have used our assets for challenges and then I have them get on the same calls I give my team and they're like, my God, my team's so excited. They're so fired up. Like they're all in. I like, they're kind of upset because they're like, they, they're not responding to me when I do that stuff, but they respond yeah. to when me and Dustin do it. So like, if you're kind of in that burned out space, the idea of creating all the assets and all the marketing and all the things to run a challenge and getting your team on board and getting your team excited and getting them trained, like it's an absolute no brainer. Reach out to me or Dustin and we'll show you how you guys can get involved with the with the upcoming challenge that we, we're launching for for our mastermind members. That's all I got. Huh? Uh send us off, big dog. Yes. So guys, that is it. One thing we're just trying to really, really push hard during this time is that you give us a five-star review. And the reason for that is because we're trying to get into the ears of more gym owners. So if you guys would do us a solid, go ahead and just, as you you know wrap up this episode, just go into the app, give us the five-star review, tell us just one takeaway. It would mean the world to us. It just helps us again to get the word out about the podcast. So guys, that's it. And we will see you next week for another awesome episode. Have a great one. Hey, do you need a sales rep to take care of all of your lead follow-up? Well, that is exactly what we do at Gym Reinforcements. We plug a sales rep into your business to do all of the inbound and outbound lead nurture. I'm talking text, emails, calls, social media DMs. If you or one of your team members is needing to do that every single day and it is draining, then it's time to head it off to me and my team. So if you want to learn more, go to gymreinforcements.com and we'll be happy to grow your business.